Hello, dear children. It has been very long since I have been with you in our environmental talks. I know you have had fun while learning about the interrelationship between animals. I want you to complete any work that has been left incomplete from the previous two lessons. Children, I want to share something that happened with me last week. I read on a WhatsApp society group that there would be no water supply for the next whole day and there was some plumbing and cleaning work going on. I immediately filled up all the tubs and buckets I have at home. Soon the water supply got exhausted and I had no problem because I had enough water in store. Storage of water has been a part of life since very, very long. I'm sure your parents also do the same when there is not going to be water supply at home. The earliest stores of water were much different from the modern methods of water storage. Let us take a look at these. Before that, children, can you tell me which season are we in now? Well, we are experiencing the rainy season. Where does all the rainwater go, children? Some of it goes deep into the ground. Some of it adds to the rivers. Some of it flows down mountain slopes and so on. In the olden days, water was stored to last the whole year through. The sources of water were as such. Well, some rainwater seeps into the ground. Wells are dug to obtain this water. Some wells are still operational in some of the village regions of India. We also have one in our school. You must have seen it. Water tanks in forts. People lived on hill forts in the past. They also needed water because water is a basic necessity. The forts had reservoirs and tanks dug into the stone. You must have learned about Shivaji. He too, along with his people, lived in forts. Water being the basic necessity, reservoirs and tanks were dug into stones. Do you know what reservoirs are, children? They are large lakes formed naturally or created by man to store large quantity of water. Draw wells or ard. These kind of wells can be seen in most villages. It is called a draw well because you can draw or bring out water from the well in a vessel tied with a long rope. Can you see this rope over here, children? And can you see the vessel? Once the taps were introduced in places like Adpati in the Sangli district, most of these draw wells were sealed. Rivers and bunds. A bund is a wall built around the water that needs to be stored. Can you see this wall over here, children? This is built across the river to store the water. Earthen or masonry buns were built across rivers to store water. Old reservoirs. These were specially built in places with less rainfall or places which did not have a river or a lake. This place must definitely be having less rainfall children and so they have built this so that they could store water for the whole year to last. Old tanks or hold. Earlier, tanks were used to store water. Some large cities still have these old tanks. Some of them are still in use. Find out from your parents if they know of any such water storage systems. Here is the summary of what we have just learned, children. We learned about the different methods of water storage. We learned about the well.
we learned about the well. Then we learned about the tanks and the draw wells and the bund and the old reservoirs and the howd. Do you know the modern methods of water storage, children? We will learn about them in the next week. I want you to read this lesson through. I want you to learn the spellings of all the different methods of water storage that I have just taught you. Hope you have a wonderful week, children. And keep learning. I want you to read the lesson well and don't make any mistakes while you read. If you have any problem, you can ask someone who knows how to read. Thank you, children. Bye.